very little time to actually read your where they actually come from and all that. Like, uh, where they actually hail from? Minnesota. Minnesota. Hometown Minnesota. And the word are you still living there? Mm-hmm. You know, you started at the age of 19, right? Like your when you put your first albums together for Warners. Mm-hmm. No. I was supposed to be 18. 17. Was it difficult for you to actually get a, uh, a deal with one at that age? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was difficult for me to produce my album that age so that I was able to produce my own records for that reason. I thought I was young and inexperienced. So they got a, um, they got an executive producer. Um, it's for you, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, but the role that the executive producer had was just to supervise the whole thing. Well, he was supposed to help out and cut corners, help me cut corners and things like that. And basically, teach me the studio, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. So it took a long time to do the album. It's pretty painstaking. Now, did you actually have a lot of material for the album already prepared, let's say, from way back, or did you have to compose it there and then? Mm. Most of it was pretty old stuff. Yeah. Mm. What was, let's say, the strength of making a, a very, uh, what, strong debut album as such? Did you require, uh, I mean, there it was, you know, like your first album, you've got to make like a strong impact sort of thing. Did you, did, you were obviously nervous about the fact. How nervous were you? Very. I'm not really nervous as much as I wanted to make it good. And there are after mistakes and in the process I took a long time to make. Probably why I don't listen to it anymore. You don't listen to it? No. It was a perfect record. And um, it was too scientific. How did you feel actually when you had to go and talk to all those, you know, big men, cigars, and Century City, those sort of Burbank, you know, I mean, how did you, how did you feel? Coming from Minnesota, I mean, I feel the same way when I have to talk to anybody. I'm usually nervous. I don't like meeting people so much. I'm the first time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like to meet them, but I don't like to have to talk. I really they do not talk. But I found myself answering a lot of questions and things like that. They didn't talk to me too much. I, I listened most of the time. I wasn't so bad. Did you actually have a manager then as well? So you had somebody to contact the right deal for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you've said that uh, you didn't do too much talking. Do I get the assumption that you are not too keen on interviews? So mm-hmm. no, I'm not too terribly keen on interviews. What actually made you sort of shy away from interviews? And one of the first ones I did. People just didn't believe me. They, they thought I was either a fixation of someone's publicity stunts or I was just a big liar or something. But, uh, I don't know, I had to deal with a lot of psychiatrists, so to speak. In what way were they saying that you were a liar? Well, uh, I don't know. One thing they don't believe this is my real name. Another thing they don't believe the clothes I wear. They think I'm doing it to gain attention. Something like that. Now I must jump from that to a track called Uptown on your album. Now that I presume is 
pure autobiographical, am I right? Yeah. Is it actually your stuff all it's based on the experiences? Right, the dirt in my mind. Now, on Uptown, there it, it's it's quite disturbing that uh, you had to go through what you had. In other words, you've described that you always wanted to be up there. There's a good life and an Uptown. Is that literally mm -hmm. literally how it was? No, Uptown is more or less um, a state of mind. Um, it has nothing to do with financial status. It all has to do with how free you are inside and how good you feel about yourself and how strongly you feel about yourself and, um, and what you stand for and your beliefs. And that's what that was about. Um, it's like me and my group and uh, with the people like us that we hang around, we get a lot of slack for the way we dress and stuff like that. And the first impression they get is that we're gay. That's what they usually do when they don't understand something. People where I come from, they usually you know, just write it off as being gay or something like that. They were saying that um, our clothes and the way, the way we act and the things we say, you know, our ways of doing things and not that you know, society doesn't tell us the way to dress, right? It's it's all just <coughs> what it's saying, right? I mean, do you actually get people coming up to you and asking you about your sexual inclination? All the time. <laughs> but if, if so, that's perhaps why they were uh, taking you as a, a liar, maybe, because they saw the way you dress and they thought he can't be right. Mm -hmm. How long did how long did it have to, did it take them to prove to all those people that you know you were what you were? Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think they understand that. Um, I think if they look at me long enough, they take the picture. Mm -hmm. Now, were you uh, influenced by what goes on around in Minnesota about your appearance and how you wanted to grow up and be like? Mm -hmm. I'm sure to some extent. What it was was that I had a lot of free-minded friends who were, were into individuality and you were ridiculed often for copying people and picking up trends and wearing what everybody else had on and saying what everybody else said and playing the same kind of music as everybody else. So what happened is a, a great deal of competition grew out of it and you so I competed with the other musicians and the other artists in all time. And uh, through that, I guess you come up with your own rule. But now, I've never read so many I mean, biographies which have used so many adjectives in describing you, co you know, comparing you to many people and things like that. I mean, one of them, I don't know, that uh, made me laugh, he said, Prez has got a bit of. Uh, something funk and a bit of uh, the plasmatics, <laughs> you know, I wish they they obviously trying to put a, a picture on to you. You have also been described as outrageous, but how do you yourself see yourself? Hmm. You never had to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I really look, I don't, um, one thing I try to do is analyze myself, I, uh, just, uh, do something that feels like, whether it's musical or physical or whatever. I don't, I don't plan things, I don't take time to think about things, I just do it. Sometimes I reflect afterwards, sometimes I don't. I'm always looking for new outlets and new eyes, I guess.
Has there been moments, let's say, after a bit, that you say, geez, I was one there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, one time I saw a videotape of one of our concerts, and uh, I don't, I don't believe that was really me. So I don't want to watch this mm -hmm. Do you actually, I mean, you've, you've started, I was, what I was reading is that you, you well, started as uh, a, a musician, or I mean, playing instruments here and there at a very early age. And your parents come from a, a jazz background, right? Did that affect you at all? Did it affect your upbringing? Because then I believe you actually left home at a very early age as well. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't affect you. In any way, I don't think, because of when my father left when I was seven. He, he was really the um, you know, only one that was really musical. My mother sang for him, but she sang in the band, and she was, you know, she wasn't that good. She only lasted a month later, and she got somebody else. And um, when he left, that's when I picked up the piano, because he didn't allow anyone to play it when he lived there. So, I don't think it affected me too much. If anything, my mother, just like the fact that I played because I was a lot like him, and that's what broke him apart. And it's eventually what broke me and my mother apart too. I left home when I was 12, and that was after she remarried, and that's when I started my own band. So music was the thing that broke you up? Oh, I'm sure it was. And the fact that I wanted to do what I wanted to do. She uh, disliked some of the lyrics I wrote and for something. Did your lyrics then reflect what you are doing today as well? Yeah. Probably more so than now. Did she perhaps imagine that you maybe just end up playing in a, some sleazy jazz bar downtown? Mm -hmm. Just like my father. Uh -huh. What do you, I, I mean, if you look at that, are you playing to a different audiences now? I mean, you're not playing to, you know, the blues, I mean, I want to say the blues, I mean, those type of, you know, crowded piano, jingle jangle thing. But how do you view those things? How do you view those places? Because I think they're remarkable. I don't know. Um, when I used to play them, I liked them. Because, um, I guess basically because I was disregarded, I suppose. I mean, people didn't, didn't pay much attention when we used to have to play. The only times I got any recognition was when I was really young and I wanted to join and play for people. But um, I think they're, I think they're all right. I think they're still good purpose. Now, was that when you, I mean, when you're playing those bars, was it when you had the band called Champagne? Yeah. So what did Champagne consist of? What music were you playing for? You? Top four this night. When we were a um, human walking shoe box. Otherwise you won't be accepted, right? Right. That's pretty sick. What a hard life. Mm -hmm. Did you... Uh, uh, we'll talk about the lyrics a bit later on, but... Well, first of all, I mean, how do you look at your lyrics? Are they filthy, outrageous, dirty, as people say? Or do you see them as clean, nice sex, you know? I, I think, um, I don't think sex is dirty at all. No, this is right. I, I think, um, I think it can be described as many things, just as, just as soccer or something like that can be described. I mean, I, you know, see people fall around in the mud and stuff like that, you know? They, it's funny, but um, I don't know, I think society places a lot of emphasis on adjectives too much. You mm -hmm. should just concentrate basically on the equal sign of what they get after it's all over. Yeah. I think this is, a, uh, somebody said the other day, uh, that I can't remember who the hell it was, but he said, 
that the world is just totally obsessed with sex, but they're very afraid to admit that they like it. Mm -hmm. Very much so. But then there's a person like you for writing, say, lyrics like Head, for example, you know, which is, you can't get more simpler than that, you know. Well, I think anybody that breaks out of the norm is going to get attacked anyway. You know, I get attacked by the clubs I wear. So, you know, anything different than I'm going to go after you and go I guess maybe to some degree I must crave that deep down. Where do you think you've picked up all that from? From the clubs or the... the the things that you write about, the, the, the sexual thing or the mm -hmm. badness, maybe. Um, I've always written, I've always written really explicit and I've always said what was on my mind. Sex was always most interesting to me because it dealt more with human life than anything. The reproductive process and the whole idea of the, the fact that I, the fact that people lose their cool behind it is, is enough to write about to me. When I was young, I used to um, read my mother's dirty books that she had hidden in her bedroom. That was after my father left. I always rambled through her things. And um, when I got sick of reading those, when I was done with them, I would write my own. So I think it sort of carried on me. The rest of my writing. Have you reconciled with your family? Mm. Have I what? Reconciled. Have you gone oh, back? No. So as far as you and they are concerned, you don't exist or they don't exist? Mm. No, I won't say that. I mean, I don't consider them dead, but mm. we don't talk too much. Now, when you left home, you went to your aunt, didn't you? Or you went to a friend? I went to a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. Aunts and friends and more friends in their homes and stuff. And I was reading a very interesting thing about it, because when you went to, I think, one of your friends, where you were really scared about what you were doing, and it says, the Bible you said, that the person told you, is that girls still down there or something like that and after she was just locked the door and you felt freedom from then on. Mm -hmm. Is that literally the time when you said, I can do what I like? Basically. Yeah. Well, I, well, I was a little older then and I realized that um, I'd been on my own for a long time and I really wasn't. Um, I, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that I was I was on my own, but I didn't know it, you know, it was like, I, I was alone, but I guess I didn't realize it up until that point, and when, when she said that, I realized that I was growing older and I was an adult, and, uh, and then on, I did, I guess I did for my life. What um, are actually your roots, I mean, you are not a black American, you know, I mean, the, the black American. Where, where do you actually come from? I mean, your roots come from? Well, my father's black, and my father's Italian, and my mother's Italian, and there's something else in it. That's basically Is it known publicly or surname, or do you don't reveal that? <laughs> Probably at home. My real name is Prince. That was my dad's name. Mm -hmm. um, my last name is pretty sickly, so I don't use it. Okay. Now, uh, when you had, let's say, to present your show on stage and, and things like that, uh, you obviously had thousands of eyes on you, people saying, well, let's see what he's like. And people were comparing you to, uh, comparing your focus to Smoker Robinson, Curtis Mayfield and all that. And your P 
appearances, uh, perhaps the nostalgia there, and a bit of Hendrix, and a bit here and there, you know. How do you react to that? Um, I just like I mean, they're nice people. Though. I mean, Hendrix was great, Smokey is great. You just like it, though. Yeah, because, um, I don't know, that was a, all I felt was before my time. I guess Smokey still makes the records. But, um, when they were going on, they were before my time, and I didn't listen to that kind of music. I only played the music that was, that was big during that time because I had to, which made me just like it a great deal because it was a boundary. So I didn't um, I didn't listen to those people in the case of studying when I did compare to them. I think I dislike anything that's 